After the disappearance of 23-year-old Hannah Potts, an investigation involving the FBI began. The case received a lot of media attention, and the unraveling of the mysterious disappearance shocked many people. Hannah's family had no idea who would eventually be charged. Hannah lived with her large family in Gibson County, located in the southwestern American state of Indiana. Many people who lived there farmed, and the Potts family was no exception. They had their own small farm, and Hannah's parents thought it was a good and safe place to work, live, and raise their children. It was indeed a safe place, but as you know, sometimes things change. The summer of 2020 was a turning point for the Potts family, after which their lives changed forever. On the night of July 23, 24, Hannah couldn't sleep. She told her mother she was going to walk around the farm, look at the animals, and maybe take some pictures, then took her phone and camera, left the house, and headed for the barn. In the morning, the family discovered that Hannah was not at home, and a post appeared on her Facebook page that shocked everyone. She posted a video which, judging from the image, was recorded in the dark, as the picture is a black screen throughout the video. Let's listen to her heart-wrenching plea. Mom, are you there? Hello? Mom, if you can hear me, please say something. I really need to hear your voice. Something's happened. I, I, I was out taking those pictures of animals. And, and, this, and this, this guy came out of nowhere. It was the same guy I saw yesterday morning in, in the maroon car. He, he grabbed me and he, and he pushed me into a truck. Hannah's parents immediately contacted the police. Taking into account all the circumstances and the fact that in such cases even minutes can change everything, the FBI got involved in the case. The video quickly went viral on social media, and the same day Hannah's kidnapping was covered by the country's major TV stations. Extensive media and social media publicity helped attract a large number of volunteers who, along with the Potts family, distributed several thousand informational flyers on the first day, 
reporting that Hannah was last seen at home around 2 a.m. She was wearing a gray shirt and sports pants. It was also reported that the person who abducted her was driving a maroon car. Police appealed for anyone with any information to come forward. Hannah's family utilized every possible resource to locate her. One of these resources was social media, through which information about the kidnapping spread with great speed. Hannah had a twin sister named Lauren, and she published a post calling for help, which stated, with a broken heart, I never thought I would ever be posting something like this. I need help Facebook friends. Please share this post. Share this photo. Please help us. My twin sister, Hannah, posted a video describing she had been kidnapped this morning. If you have seen her or heard from her, please contact Princeton, Indiana Police Department or my family. I miss you, Hannah. Please come home. When the FBI tried to track Hannah's cell phone, they found that on the day of her abduction, a cell tower located about a couple miles from the Potts family home was receiving a signal from her phone. Hannah posted the video on her Facebook page around 6 a.m. By then, she was already being held hostage, and her phone signal was still being picked up by a cell tower located close to the house. This meant that Hannah was being held in a room not far from her family's home. Police were desperately searching for a man in a maroon car but it was impossible to find a man fitting that description living within a five-mile radius of the Potts family home. While researching Hannah's life and trying to find out if anyone she knew could have been involved in her disappearance, detectives discovered that prior to her disappearance, she had been in close contact with a 34-year-old woman named Maria Hopper, who lived just a mile from their home. When investigators arrived to speak to Maria, she confirmed that she knew Hannah, but said she had last seen her a few days before the abduction. It seemed like another dead end, but when a report from a cell phone carrier came into police possession, and when access was gained to Hannah's social media page where she posted her heartbreaking plea, it became clear that Maria Hopper had lied when she said she had seen Hannah a few days before the abduction. Hannah disappeared in the early morning hours of July 24th. Two days later, on the morning of July 26th, several police officers went to Maria Hopper's home. She again told the police officers that she knew nothing about Hannah's whereabouts. Also at Maria's home was her boyfriend, 45-year-old Joshua Thomas, who told police officers that he did not know Hannah at all. Officers asked Maria for permission to look around the house. Reluctantly, the woman did give her consent, but immediately stated that Hannah was not in her house. The police saw nothing suspicious inside, except for the stairs in the kitchen leading to the basement. Maria said that there was nothing but unnecessary things in the basement, but the law officials decided to inspect the basement with their own eyes. Among the dusty items in the basement, the police noticed a sheet of plywood that was different from everything else. There was no dust on it, and it gave the impression that this sheet of plywood had not been in the basement as long as all the other items. The plywood seemed to be blocking the passage to another part of the basement, and as one of the officers began to move it away, Maria Hopper made an important announcement. But before we move on, we need to turn our attention once again to the recording made by Hannah. When the video was shared on social media, observant people immediately noticed the weirdness and illogical actions on Hannah's part. She recorded a six-minute video. Many wondered why she was wasting precious time recording the video instead of calling 911. Why didn't the kidnapper search her and take her phone? What was she even going to take pictures of at the farm at 2 in the morning? While recording the message, she initially said she was kidnapped by a man. But after a few minutes, Hannah is heard saying, they, as if there were multiple kidnappers. She logged onto social media, so she had internet access at the location where she was being held and could have pinpointed her location, but for some reason, she didn't. Of course, the authorities also paid attention to all these oddities, but because everyone behaves differently under stress, the investigation was in full force, and until proven otherwise, Hannah's disappearance was considered a kidnapping. The truth was revealed when the police gained access to Hannah and Maria Hopper's correspondence. When the officer wanted to see what was behind a sheet of plywood in the basement of Maria's house, she admitted that Hannah was hiding there. The police officer pushed the plywood aside and ordered her to come toward him. When Hannah came into the light, 
the officer saw that she had fully functioning handcuffs on her right wrist and fully functioning shackles binding her ankles. The young woman immediately admitted to police officers that no one had kidnapped her and that she was sitting in the basement of her own free will. As it turned out, Hannah had planned her own kidnapping, in which she was assisted by Maria Hopper and Joshua Thomas. This became clear from their correspondence on social media networks. The tone, content, and context of the messages read similar to a fantasy fiction story, police wrote in the arrest records. All three were taken to the police station for further investigation. Of course, the question on everyone's mind was, why did she do it? Hannah told the investigators that she was writing a book and had decided to stage her own kidnapping for inspiration and to learn how kidnapped victims feel. Maria and Joshua were characters in her story and helped her organize everything. They hid her in their basement, brought her food and drinks, and according to Hannah's own direction, destroyed her cell phone so the police couldn't trace it. The heartbreaking video that Hannah posted on her Facebook page was pre-recorded, and according to Hannah herself, she rehearsed for about a week before recording it. None of her family members knew what she was up to, and after the truth was revealed, the Potts family apologized to everyone who helped in the search and to everyone who was worried about Hannah. Her sister Brittany wrote a public apology on her social media page. In particular, it included these words. As news is getting out there about Hannah being found, I need to make a public statement addressing it. I publicly disown nor want nothing to do with my sister going forward. She is dead to me. I hope she is prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. My family feel extremely embarrassed and hurt by her actions and the fact she tried pinning this on a person of color. I pray no black man with a maroon-colored car was targeted due to her blatant lie. She has caused so much grief to my family and others, and for that, shame on you, Hannah. You made my six-year-old son cry thinking something bad had happened to you, my six-year-old baby that loved you so much. I hope you are prosecuted to the fullest extent. I have no words. I just feel like I owe the public an apology. I am so angry and embarrassed. While in the basement of her friend's home, Hannah kept a personal journal in which she admitted that she knew her social media post would go viral. Hannah Potts was charged with the false reporting of a kidnapping. Miss Potts's actions are criminal in nature. She had many people in her family and community worried sick over her personal health and safety. Gibson County Prosecutor Michael Cochran said in a news release, Further, she risked involving innocent individuals by giving a false description of the alleged abductor. Finally, the number of hours spent by multiple law enforcement agencies in this time of limited resources is simply not recoverable. This callous disregard for others simply will not be tolerated, his statement concluded. Maria Hopper and Joshua Thomas were charged with perjury and covering up. In an interview with police, Hopper admitted to picking up pots from her house and lying about harboring her. Thomas also said he knew of the kidnapping hoax and that Potts was in the home. All three were released on bail and were at large pending trial. In September 2020, Hannah Potts pleaded guilty to knowingly making a false report of kidnapping. She was sentenced to one year of probation and 120 hours of community service. Joshua Thomas and Maria Hopper also received probationary sentences. Many of those who are familiar with this story believe that Hannah was not only looking for inspiration, coming up with a plan for her own abduction, but also wanted to create a stir around her person and thereby create the prerequisites for successful sales of her book. What are your thoughts on Hannah Potts' actions? Please share your opinion in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.